guys, here's the next video in our lecture series. So today what we're focusing on is we're going to do a little bit of topic three and topic four for the next little bit. So we're looking at um, the rest of the modeling um, and we're going to look at computer aided design today uh, and we're going to finish up with uh, the rest of the raw materials. So here we go. Let's start with this computer aided design. So this is a definition. It's called CAD, right? Computer aided design is CAD. This is just kind of a quick you know, I think it's about a minute long video about all the things that CAD can do, some modeling concepts that uh, particularly these are important concepts for us in our class. Some of the concepts that you're going to learn about in CAD are, are great, but they're just not something that we can apply within our, uh, within our context here. So go ahead and watch this video, and um, this is stuff that we, we'll need to develop skills in all of these um, concepts right here. Okay. Let's, uh, you know, CAD, CAD can be its computer aided design. So basically what we were, we were looking at is two dimensional, so 2D. So this is just length and width, this is flat. So something like Adobe Illustrator or Autodesk AutoCAD. Um, in the 3D stuff, we have, uh, for instance, Fusion 360, but you can also use Google SketchUp or SolidWorks. Rendering, now rendering is where you are taking a uh, three dimensional object and you are basically putting, um, making it appear to be a real, object. So 3D Studio Max, Blender, some people have, if, um, a couple of the students uh, last year in grade 10 were very into Blender. Uh, you can see that Fusion 360, Inventor, and uh, SolidWorks also does that. I'm not familiar with Maya. Okay, so these are some just definitions and you got to learn them. So for instance, a surface model. Okay, so we're looking at something like this or this, that it's a realistic image of a product that's made with a computer. So it's designed on a computer. It's not a real object, but it looks like a real object. Okay, and, and surface basically means that there might be some machining data, like for instance, the, the sizes here um, that are in millimeters, but there's no data about the interior of the product. So that, that data doesn't exist. Like we don't know anything about the inside of this mouse. Um, we can see some stuff on the inside of this box, but but you know not not a ton. Okay, so that's a surface model. Now a solid model is going to give you a clear representation of the final product, and it's going to have data for the product uh, to be realized, including the internal dimensions and volume. So you're going to understand what's inside an object. Also, if we were to go back here, we would know what's inside this thing, what's inside this thing. Okay. Um, it should have some data um, shown on this. And this is what you would want for a, you know, this, this particular GIF is really trying to show you the interior of this object. And that's, that's the idea here, that a solid model includes stuff that's inside compared to a surface model, uh, surface model which is really only focused on the outside. Okay, we can create data models, and this is more or less uh, associated with IT stuff. So if you're if you're creating a uh, an app or you're creating a computer program or something like that, you would want to structure your data and and basically kind of see how it's connected, see see how data flows. So we're looking at typical data models include databases, and and you would be you know, thinking about how could you design a database so that you can um, gather more data from that. Okay, information systems, how does information flow within a system? Um, and basically, um, you know, the, the real application of this is in the exchange of data. Okay, this is, you know, this is Google and things like that are, are all about data modeling. So that's, that's another type of data. This is something that we probably won't focus on much in our class, but you do need to know it. Okay, virtual prototyping. This involves using um, solid and, and uh, surface models to develop um, interactive models. So this is something that's gonna actually interact with what's around it, okay? And these are considered digital mockups. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and watch this video and it's kind of showing the idea behind this and, and, and specifically focusing on packaging, consumer packaging. So. Uh, it's kind of an interesting um, application of what we're talking about here, but it's virtual prototyping, which is really, you know, making something that is the model is interacting. So rather than just having a, a model, it would just be the the model interacting in its natural environment. 
Okay, we've got something called bottom-up design. So with bottom-up design, you essentially create all the parts and put them together. So this is a piston, and um, so these are all of the parts of the piston, and they're, they're separate, and then they come together. Okay, so that's the important part to understand here. Okay, this is a definition. You do need to know it. Okay, here we go. On to the next thing. We've got top down. So top down is basically the opposite of bottom up. So in that case, what you're doing is you're thinking of the outside of, of something and then you're modeling it down into the interior. Okay, um, this for instance, if you're thinking about building a car, might be what you wanna do. Maybe you would sculpt the surface of the car and then what you would do is you would design all the components to fit within that particular um, shape. So, you know, for instance, if you're modeling a new uh, type of, of car, you would make sure that the windows, windows and the, you know, the door frames and the, uh, the steering wheel and the seats and everything fit within that, that skin of the car. So it's kind of like you create the surface model and then you, you put all the components in it to make sure that they fit. So this is called top down. Okay, so again, it's kind of looking at the outside in, whereas bottom up is looking at the inside and then moving it to the outside. Okay, digital humans. So this is something that uh, people use all the time. And this is a great uh, example of that. Essentially what they're doing is they're creating anthropomorph anthropometrically um, valid uh, models of humans that they can put into a given situation and, and see how they actually um, react in that, that, uh, that situation, right? So it's a computer simulation that has the mechanical and biological aspects of a human body, right? And so this is a digital human. It can be uh, joint resistance, discomfort, reach envelopes, and visual fields. That might be important for something like a, you know, an airline pilot. You'd want to have a fake human in there to kind of know what the person would see, how, if they could reach the controls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's... Um, we, we use digital models of humans for that, and those can be created... Um, with computers. So computer aided design again. Okay, motion capture. So this is um, this is a way to, to reduce the cost of animation. I, mean, if, if, I don't know if you know how they used to do animation, but if they used to draw every frame or if they would stop motion animation, um, they would actually have a model that they would move um, to go through that. But now uh, people are doing um, uh, motion capture with humans and this guy is super famous for this so if you watch this video you'll recognize the roles that he's played I mean one of them's right there he was uh, in Planet of the Apes and that's him like that's you can kind of see and interestingly you can kind of see the the resemblance a little bit uh, on him but uh, he also played another very famous role that if you watch this video you'll see uh, what role he played and he is an expert at, at this whole idea of motion capture and he'll show you how it how it works so please do watch this video it's pretty interesting uh, I watched a really great video where he recreated a you know, a uh, Neanderthal caveman um, showing how they um, you know motion capture this, this amazing um, models of, of a Neanderthal and tried to figure out how they would have actually interacted with their environment very very interesting so anyways, he's, he's, a, he's a, a huge expert in, to, in these kinds of things. And he appears in a lot of different movies. Okay, this is a definition. You do need to know this. Okay, haptic technology. So this is a, an interesting kind of new field. So haptic is where you are, it's basically an interface between a user and the sense of touch. So haptic has something to do with touch, how something feels. Okay, um, and... You know, it's also known as force feedback technology. Um, go ahead and read all these, right? So, um, you know, they use these actuators to apply force to the user. I'm going to show you some examples. If, you, if you've ever seen Ready Player One, you know, the suit that he wears is essentially a haptic suit. Um, you want to uh, try to simulate the physics of the user's world. Um, this also connects to, to VR, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, it allows somebody to become part of a computer simulation. Um, it can be used in situations where it's difficult to train in the real environment. And it also um, is used for feedback 
on home entertainment consoles. So this is something I think that's going to come in the future. And again, it's a bit like uh, Ready Player One, if you ever saw that movie. Okay, so haptic technology. Um, this is a, ha a haptic suit. So if you click on this company's website, so uh, please do, and watch the video. It gives you an idea of what, what their haptic suit is. And it, it comes back to this whole idea right here, where, you know, simulating the physics. It, uh, it allows you to do training in different in, um, in real world environments. So please do watch that. Okay, VR, so virtual reality. So this is the ability to simulate a real situation on screen and interact with, with it in a natural way. And please do watch this video. It's, it's kind of an interesting um, video where they're actually trying to make it so that you can run in these environments. And this is a device that allows you to walk or run within one of these environments. And, and then when you're wearing the VR headset and, you know, it makes you feel like you're actually there. Okay, uh, animation. So when we're thinking animation, we're thinking this kind of animation, right? So, you know, it's a link between graphics screen, it's linking graphics screens together that simulates motion or process. So we're thinking, this type of animation, um, definitely not this type of animation, right? So, um, you know, when we're doing animations, we're thinking about, like, how can we take our products, animate them so that they're realistically doing what they should be doing. Okay, last one. We have finite element analysis. So this involves the calculation and simulation of unknown factors in products using CAD systems. So it's basically, it allows you to sort of estimate how would this thing that you've designed react in the real, real world, okay? So, um, so for example, you would be simulating stresses within uh, the welded, welded car parts, or you can watch this video right here. It just shows you, uh, it's very quick, it's like a minute long, um, but it shows you uh, an example of what stresses might be um, happening to a bicycle frame as it's, as it's moving. So it's stressing a bicycle frame, and that, that allows you to see where are the points where something would break, right? You know, um, what are the stress points that, that are going to cause uh, failure? And what are the stress points that aren't? You know, if, there, if you've got a place where you've got a lot of material that's unneeded, you know, that's, uh, that's something that we want to know. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. See you guys next time.